All right, in this lecture we're going to talk about uh, version control, uh, specifically with the version control tool Git. So Git is a version control system. Uh, you know, version control is commonly used by large code development projects to track and commit and maintain changes to their code base. Uh, however, Git's so easy to use, I'm going to recommend it for using it for projects large and small. I, in fact, often use it just to keep versions of Word documents or uh, LaTeX files or reports or Mathematica files or whatever I'm working on that I want to maintain a version. And the reason for maintaining versions is that, you know, as we progress through long documents, large pieces of code or whatever, uh, sometimes, especially when, with respect to coding, we want to um, try experimental things and sometimes they don't work out so we want to be able to go back in time to certain snapshots in time to, to see if um, or you know to recall our previous work that, that we know that we liked or worked. Um, so Git's not the only version control system there's other ones out there CVS and SVN have been around a long time uh, HG or Mercurial is the one that's not uh, as common uh, probably CVS and SVN <clears throat> are probably still today between the two of them uh, more common but but every day people are moving their projects to Git because it's just a great piece of software. Uh, it was written by a guy named Linus Torvalds whose name should sound familiar because he wrote the original Linux kernel. So if you want to create a repository it can't be any simpler in the directory that contains the files you want to track uh, you just simply type git init. So just to give you an example we'll go over here and we're going to create a repository in the directory of the LaTeX files that I'm actually used to create the slides that you're that you're looking at. We're working off in this lecture. So uh, in this uh, in this directory, we'll simply type git init, and that will you know it'll give us a message there that uh, created a new git repository. Uh, you'll also notice that my personal command prompt uh, changed to, to where you see the master there. Um, that's the the branch, the default branch. Uh, of the repository. So you could go on later and create other branches, say experimental and you know my branch or whatever uh, and then later you could either merge them or throw them away just depending on what, what you decide. But the default is always the master branch uh, and I have some special code in my bash or C file which allows it to show up there in the command prompt. Uh, you can take a look at mine if you'd like if you'd like to replicate that. Okay. So then to add files uh, to our repository, so Git doesn't automatically just include all the files in that directory. It actually wants you to explicitly uh, add them uh, because sometimes you can have a lot of files in your directory and you only want to track certain ones. Uh, and, and so you know, Git allows you to do that. Uh, to get a listing of the untracked files or the tracked and untracked files, you can type git status. So if we just type git status, you'll see that uh, basically, all the all the files in the directory in this case are are untracked. So, um, for you know our LaTeX example, really all all the ones that we'd want to track would be uh, you know the git.tech file, the Beamer style file, and then I have a folder called scripts. Uh, so if we just say git, um, I missed add there. So if we type git add in those three files, and then we do git status, uh, you can see well. Uh, the, the scripts file is actually uh, the scripts folder is empty, so it didn't didn't attempt to add any new files there. But uh, you can see the two stage files, new file Beamer theme UTSA and Git.tech, and all the rest are untracked files. Um, so uh, what we can do now uh, is we can we can go ahead and uh, make a commit. So once we've added files to the index and we're ready to commit them, which a commit is basically a snapshot in time that we'd want to go back to, um, we can use uh, the command git commit and then if we put a dash in there uh, and then follow that by a quoted message, uh, just a short description of any kind of message uh, th that would describe our commit. Uh, if we leave off the dash m, uh, Git will look in your uh, profile for a variable called editor. I think by default it's usually set to vi or vim. Uh, you can change that if you're an Emacs user. But uh, if you leave that off then, and you just simply type git commit, uh, it's going to open up an editor window uh, for you to, to make some changes. Uh, and then when you close that, it'll go ahead and, and make the commit. Okay. 
So uh, to commit all uh, modified files in a, in a directory, we can, we can add the dash A uh, option. So let's go ahead and make our first commit uh, an example here. So what we'll do is just say git commit, and we'll give a little message, usually just to simply say first commit uh, is adequate for the first commit itself, but later on you're going to want to be a little more descriptive. Okay, so now uh, if we look at git status, you can see that uh, you know the two new files or the modified files are gone, and uh, the only thing that's that's left there are all of the uh, the ones that we're not tracking. Okay, so to make things a little easier and to, to get rid of those, well, I guess first of all, let me just say a little bit about uh, commit messages. So if you leave the dash m off, it's going to open up an editor and you'll be prompted to write a commit message. And these are just some comments about what a good commit message should look like. The first line should always be very short and uh, basically summarize the changes. And if you need further explanation, you can put it down below in bullets and there's some comments about the, the, ten, the uh, tense of your text and everything to be consistent with uh, you know, convention and, and the way things work when you look at uh, log messages and other things. Uh, so then what I was about to say is uh, we can get rid of all those kind of uh, untracked files that are cluttering up our git status message by sticking them in a git ignore file. So of course in this case all, all of the files that you see there for untracked, those are files that are just temporary and recreated when we uh, you know, compile the LaTeX file. So uh, we, we can get rid of those and, and um, probably the easiest way is if we do a long listing, uh, I'm sorry, a, a listing of all the files in the directory and we just redirect that to git ignore a file called git ignore and then if we edit that file uh, now we're going to want to remove uh, we're going to want to remove the files we do want to keep mainly the style file and the git.tech uh, it was just easier since in this case that we want to ignore more than we want to uh, we want to ignore more of the files than than we want to hold on to uh, we can put those in there and now if we type git status uh, you'll see that there, you know, get a message that there's nothing to commit. So uh, let's let's do a couple of uh, edits. So if we edit the dat tech file, um, I'm just going to edit the current line I'm on, on here with uh, just some edits. Okay. So now I can actually just type get add dot. That'll add every uh, file. Well, before I do that, let's type get status again, and you'll see that I've, you know, it tells you that you've modified the git.tech file. So if I want to commit that, I need to add it again. And, and one way would be to just say git uh, add git.tech. And that would be fine. But since we've kind of gotten rid of all of the uh, files we don't wish to track, uh, we want to you know, track every file that's not in the git ignore command, we can just simply add the whole directory by just typing git add dot. And now we're ready to make another commit. So uh, if we just say git commit, dash m uh, in this this case uh, I'll, uh, I'll say um, commit after first edits okay I know I misspelled commit there but we'll, we'll go on uh, then we'll make a few more commits so uh, I'm sorry a few more edits so let's go and look at this file again and some more edits, okay. Uh, this time we'll do the, the shortcut method, so we'll say git commit dash a, which is going to you know add all modified files, so we don't have to do the git add, and then we're going to say uh, you know another commit. All right. So now if we type git log, we can see a listing of the three commits that are there, okay. Um, if you'd like to remove a file from git, uh, there's, there, you basically use git remove. Uh, if you do it this way, it actually removes the hot file from your disk, uh, just like the regular remove command would. However, if you simply want to remove it from the, the git listing, uh, you know, the git index, but keep the file on the disk, then you, you'd use this command here, okay, the, the, with the dash uh, cached option, okay. So, uh, now let's talk about how to go back in time. So we've made a couple of edits, and, and let's you know say that we at, at some point we we decided we, we don't want them anymore. Uh, we can actually go go back in time by using the git reverse 
revert command. So if we uh, type, uh, you know, revert head, uh, it'll take us back to the previous commit. So if we, again, type uh, git revert head, rather, uh, you see in this case it, it actually opened up our editor and it, and it actually put together a, a message for us. It's going to say that, you know, this commit reverts to that long hash string. We'll come back to what that hash string is in just a second. But um, it's going to tell us that, you know, it basically created a, a git commit message for us. So we're just going to go ahead and accept that. We could make, we could add our own text if we wanted to, but we'll just uh, accept that. And, and then you can see that uh, there's a message there that it reverted another commit. So now if we look at the git log, you can see that there's actually a commit message saying that we reverted to the previous commit, okay? And we can look at that git.tech file to see that, you know, if you, re if you recall at the end here, in the first commit, I, you know, I wrote some edits, but then after that I wrote some more edits or additional edits or something like that, and, and it's gone. So we actually did uh, revert and, and go back in time there, okay? So we could also revert back to, you know, commits farther back in time by using this syntax, say if we wanted to go three commits back. Um, we can also go back to a specific commit. So when we type git log, you see that long hash string. We can actually refer exactly to the commit we want to uh, revert to by typing in the hash string. Um, you know, the, the hash string is something like 28 characters long or maybe longer, I'm not sure. Uh, exactly how long it is, but you only need to type in enough characters uh, to make it unique, which is usually only, you know, seven or eight characters at most uh, to make it, you know, even if you have a, a, a range of commits that are you know, thousands of commits long, the seven or eight uh, characters is usually enough to make it unique. So again, uh, if we type git log, you can, you can see those uh, commit messages that are there. Uh, I'm sorry, the hash strings. So you, if you wanted to refer back directly to a particular commit, then, then you would do it with that. So um, we can also go back in time while trashing the changes. So if you noticed, uh, even though we went back to a previous commit when we used the revert command, uh, the history uh, is still stored there. And so you know, a lot of times when we go back in time, we actually want to get rid of all commits that were forward of the uh, of the commit we're going back to. And so in that case, we use git reset, uh, specifically with the hard option. And uh, here I'm going to show you an example of how to do that. Uh, we're going we're gonna to actually go back to the very first commit where we made where there was no edit. So here I'm going to say git reset hard. And then I'm going to refer to it by the hash string. So you see there above the message first commit, there's a hash string C6BF8462. That's probably enough to make it. So now you see the message head is now at the first commit. And if we go in and we look at the git.tech file, there should be no edits, right? So there, there line 241 was the one I edited. Uh, and you can see at the end of the line there, there's, there's no edits, uh, they're gone. And also you can uh, now look at the git log and you see also all the other commits we made are gone. So we moved back in time, uh, but we also deleted all the forward commits of that, of that time that we moved back to. So it's a, it's a key difference between git reset and uh, git revert. Okay, just briefly, you know, Git is extremely powerful. Um, we, can, uh, we can clone central repositories. Uh, so th this is actually um, what you do. You know, I have, I have my a repository called .vim that's stored out on the web that includes my vimrc file. And so if you'd like to uh, clone that into your own repository, you can use this command that I've typed here, git clone in the address, and then followed by a space in the directory that you want to clone into. And that will uh, that will create your own local copy that you uh, of my um, of my Git BIM repository, and you can then you know make your own edits uh, to that using the same techniques that we just talked about, uh, your own commits or whatever. And then if you ever want to stay in sync with with me, you you just simply type Git pull, and that'll pull down any changes that I may have. 
uh, committed. And so, you know, it's more really more of an advanced topic to talk about, you know, central repositories. Um, I think for the cases of the purposes of this class, uh, you know, in an introduction setting, to just talk about local repositories and how you interact with those is a good start. And so that's all I'm covering here. But I just wanted to make you aware of it. Uh, and of course, there's there's far more uh, advanced features in that we can we can branch. Uh, so this is a good way to kind of do experimental things, and then we can either merge those branches with our with our master branch, or we can throw them away. And then uh, uh, we can also push back to central repositories. And this is basically how, when you have multiple people working on a single code development project, this is how it works. You have some central repository. Uh, the central repository may include multiple branches as well, but you have some central repository that you work from. Uh, everyone pulls down a local clone or local copy, uh, does their work, commits their changes, and then pushes them back uh, to, the, to the central repository. So this is just a brief introduction of Git. It's a very powerful tool, and uh, I hope you consider using it. Thanks.